Hey guys, and welcome to or back to the Pause in Pursuit podcast with your host, Summer Clark. So today's episode is going to be slightly shorter because I have a very busy week and a lot to get done before that week. Um, tomorrow, as I'm recording this on the Sunday, tomorrow I'll be judging at Dog Sports Derby. So I'm really excited when this episode goes up, it will be done. Uh, you probably see my courses. But yeah, I hope if you did come to Dog Sports Derby, which is actually tomorrow and ran my one to three courses on Monday, you really enjoyed them. Please do give me feedback on that. Um, if you saw my courses or ran them, that would be great. But yeah, I'm super excited for that and hopefully it all goes well. But yeah, so today's going to be slightly short because I have a lot to do this week. Um, but got to get the podcast recorded. So today I'm going to be talking about my agility show staples. So this is going to include things like products, clothing, snacks and more. Um, you know, anything that I take to agility shows that just makes my life so much easier, so much better um, and just really helps me out that if I forgot when I went to a show, I would be a little bit stuck. So maybe you can find use out of these items as well so number one obviously is the chuck it ultra squeaker ball so if you've seen uh, me train arrow me compete with arrow uh, me at shows you know that arrow has a chuck it ball as his reward his mum kima also loves a chuck it ball so he's definitely got his love for balls from her but yeah he really enjoys his ball I did try tugging with him when he was little, but he never really enjoyed it. Um, he does like food, but not as much as his ball. So that is what I found to be his favourite reward ever. Um, and because it's like rubber, you know, it's not like a tennis ball with the fabric. So, you know, in the wind shows, it doesn't get dirty. Well, it does get dirty, but you can just wash it straight off. Um, it does squeak, um, which is helpful in the sense that I can use it to get Arrow, you know, assist with his recall when he was younger, um, like in the field and stuff and at training for agility, but obviously you don't want to be squeaking balls around the show environment uh, because it can distract other dogs, that's not okay. So um, a little hack, I have two of the same balls, this same ball for Arrow, one has a squeak and one is old and he's de-squeaked it. So I now have this ultra squeaker ball that doesn't squeak. So I take that to competitions and then use the squeaking one on walks, at training, stuff like that. So obviously you can't, I don't think you can purposely de-squeak a ball. That's just because it's old. Um, I'm sure Chuck does non-squeaky balls um, or the non-squeak alternative, but this is definitely the one Arrow has. Um, but that is, I don't know what I'd do without it. Say if I got to an agility show and I forgot his ball, I'd be like, well, what the hell now? What? I'd probably go to pause trading and try and find the exact ball there or something. But that is a huge staple, probably the most important thing in my agility in general. So number two is Eden Semi Moist. Um, so this isn't just a show staple. This is just a staple for training in general. Training, Manners Minder. It goes perfect in the Manners Minder. Uh, it doesn't make too much of a mess. The sizes are perfect for going through the Manners Minder. Uh, you get a few bits at a time with each press. But yeah, um, at shows, it's a staple because I always take treats um so that you know well you never know when you're going to need treats you know taking your rosette pictures at the end of the day for example is helpful um and also just for a bit of training around the ring um you know when you're sat around a ring it's always nice i think for your dog to know that you've got food there you know in the queue you can do a bit of work uh, get get their focus on you uh, without having to chuck the ball constantly especially in a tight space such as a queue so it's really helpful to have treats and eden semi moist are my favorite treats to give my dogs um they're like I said, super healthy, super good uh, quality as well. Um, it was the wild boar and pheasant that I give Arrow, but I think they've, I think they don't have that anymore. I think it's now Country Feast. Um, but yeah, those are the flavors that I'm aware of. I know there's a duck and tripe one as well. But yeah, it was the wild boar and pheasant I gave, and now um, I'm switching on to Country Feast because they brought out new recipes, new flavors, and got rid of old stuff. But yes, Eden semi moist. Highly recommend. Take that shows, you know, put it in your pocket, in your little bum bag, whatever you have. Um, and just have that there so while you're in and around the show in the queue you can get your dog's attention do a bit of training you know if your dog at the end of the day if your dog knows you have treats there and it loves them an arrow loves eating semi-moist uh you know it's not like just dry biscuits as well uh but if your dog knows you have a tasty treat on you they're going to be so much more responsive and focused on you 
And yeah, like I said, I think Arrow will be a lot less interested in just dry kibble. So the semi-moist is obviously moist um, and just really palatable and flavoursome for them. So that is number two. So number three is Halty Head Collar. Now this is very individual for me. Um, Arrow is a puller, he loves to pull. I haven't done tons of training on not making him pull, to be honest, because um, agility was always my main focus and it's not something that bothers me enough to train it. Excuse me, if that makes sense. And he does all his leads, all his leads, all his walks mainly off lead. So it's not super important. But for shows um, and places where, you know, I don't want him like dragging at the end of a lead, um, then the halty head collar is perfect. Obviously harnesses, when dogs are wearing harnesses, you know, obviously you can teach them to walk nicely on a lead. Like I know how to do that. That is a thing that you can do um, quite easily through training. However, um, harnesses do tend to encourage dogs to pull, especially dogs that haven't been trained fully to uh, walk loosely on the lead. So, you know, Arrow will wear his harness with a lead clipped to it, but then around shows, he'll also wear the halty head collar uh, with a lead attached to that. So I like to use both because um, just on his face, I don't like that because, you know, I just feel like there's not enough support. I don't want to have him completely by the face because, you know, if he does go to pull or something, it could hurt his neck if he like look, snaps back like that. Um, so I have that second lead on his harness so that there's a bit of both there um, and I can use them as I please just to give him a bit extra support. But the halty head collar is perfect. Um, I highly recommend that um, for shows and agility in general, you know, in busy environments like that where you don't want your dog pulling and you want your dog nice and controlled. Um, perfect for walking around shows if you do have a dog that pulls on the lead when it's on its harness. And obviously everything is better than putting a lead on just a collar when you have a dog that pulls. Don't do that because no. No, not for me. <laughs> you don't want a lead on a collar because your dog's just going to choke itself. So that is number three and that is amazing product. So number four is, and as you've noticed, I'm, you've probably noticed I'm doing dog products first and then I'll move into sort of my own products for me after. So number four is the Pomper Jumper. Right, I'm going to say Pomper so many times right now, but Pomper. So the Jumper Pomper and the Kevit, Ke Kevit Pomper, Kevit Pomper. Don't actually know how to say it, but the jumper pomper is um, like a little top for the dog. It doesn't have legs in it, uh, but it's a fleece. So it's a fleece with a waterproof um, undercarriage um, and it has no legs um, at all. It is great. I take it to every single show with me. Um, it's helpful for obviously it's waterproof underneath, um, so you can even use it when it's wet but it just keeps your dog warm. My dogs travel in them. Ethel has one as well when they're going to shows because it gets cold in the back of the van in the winter and it's lightweight as well. So it's not bulky. It's easy to take on and off. It's really simple, but really effective and it keeps them warm because it's so like, I don't know if it class as thermal, but it is super warm. Um, their little bodies when you take it off are so warm, but yeah, uh, the pomper jumper pomper is great for keeping your dog warm. Um, and then the Kevit Pomper is the raincoat version. So it um, clips under, so it goes under the undercarriage and round the sort of waist and clips. And that is just a raincoat pretty much. Um, but it does have like a furry lining. So it does keep them warm, but it's more of, it's like a light shell basically. So it is super helpful for um, when it's wet, but you know, not freezing. So obviously if it's freezing, you'd want the jumper pomper and then the Kevit Pomper over it. But um, when it's not actually that cold, but it's wet, say, you just put the Kevit Pomper on and that's perfect. It keeps their undercarriage nice and dry and obviously the rest of them. But yeah, the best part about it is that it's super lightweight and easy to put on and take off over the head. Um, so number five is the Beko Collapsible Travel Bowl. So I have so many of these. I think I have about three or four. I have a pink one, a green one, and then a big green one. Uh, the big green one is what I use mainly uh, when we go to shows in the van. But when I'm in my car, I have the little green one um, and they're so helpful. So they obviously collapse down into like a flat thing there. So they're super easy to transport around um, and then they pop open and they're really deep. So they are perfect because obviously one of the most important things that your dog needs when it is when you're going, you're taking them to a show. Um, is water so that is absolutely perfect it doesn't take up barely any room in a bag it doesn't take up it pretty much takes up like say if you take a thin book that's literally what it's like 
um, and then it pops out into this huge bowl. So I really highly recommend a Beko collapsible travel bowl or two. Like I said, you can get big ones and little ones, but yeah, I would not be without those. It's so much more convenient and easier and, you know, better to take to events like this with you um, than just an, a standard bowl that you is just as it is so that's perfect so number six now we're moving into my sort of things so we've done the dogs so number six is the Gymshark adapt animal or the adapt camo seamless leggings so I have two pairs I have a well I don't just have two pairs of leggings but my staples are um I have a Gymshark adapt animal pair of seamless leggings and then a adapt camo pair of seamless leggings uh, both of them are the comfiest things ever to do agility in. Um, one is the turquoise and one is the black. No, not turquoise, navy. One's the navy, one's the black. Um, I think the animal one is the navy one and the camo one is the black one, I'm pretty sure. But they're so comfy. Like I said, it feels like you're not wearing anything. I know that sounds really weird, but they are absolutely perfect for that reason. Um... I do really love those leggings and it, like I said, I literally wear them pretty much to every single show I go to. So I would really, you know, invest in a good pair of leggings and that is your set basically. Um, because if you can't move around nicely when you're running, then you're not going to be running at your best. Your agility performance isn't going to be the best. If you're in something that feels off and feels tight and it's not durable, you know, and you can't, you don't have a good range of motion in it, you're not going to perform at your best and you're probably not going to be as fast as your dog, etc. So yeah, invest in a good quality pair of leggings and those are the ones I recommend for agility super quality um they're not that they're quite warm in the winter actually but they're not too hot in the summer as well i don't know what the material's made of but i do find they are perfect for absolutely all conditions and obviously being leggings and that material they dry super fast as well so even if you get a little bit rained on at a show it doesn't last long so those are the two and obviously i'm just a huge gym 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 park shan gym shark fan i have everything gym shark so yeah I would invest in those leggings. Number seven is the Asics Gel Keanu. Keanu, I don't know how to say it. Those are the shoes that I run in. Um, I have discussed on podcast episodes before um, that I used to have Solomons and the Solomon Speed Cross 4. I had GTX, but um, it was more of a case of me getting them because everyone else in Agility had them and recommended them so i had them but then for my feet for some reason they just felt really hard uh, they are a great shoe great grip but they just felt really hard to run in and you know there just wasn't enough sort of movement in them for me i just felt a little bit stiff in them uh, so i got the a6 gel keanu now i haven't put a number because i can't remember exactly what it was i think they're only selling the gel keanu 29 at the moment on the website but i think mine was a 27 it's either the 26 or the 27 so I can't comment on the new ones, but Gel Keanu, you know, I'm sure the new ones are even better. But yeah, mine are either the 26 or the 27, um, but they're so good. They're waterproof. The grip is insane, so you're not going to fall over. Um, I have fallen over before, but only because I've tripped straight over arrows. It's not, it's not the shoe's fault. Um, so they are great. You know, they're really like a soft trainer as well. Uh, they're waterproof, but soft at the same time. Um, and I just get a really good range of movement um, in the range of, yeah, range of, you know, motion in them and I feel really springy on my feet. And again, you, you really want clothing and shoes that feel like, that you know, you don't think, oh, you can't feel the fact that they're on as such, if you get what I mean. I know that sounds really weird, but that's what the Gymshark leggings and the ASIC shoes are like. Like you don't notice that they're on your body, if that makes sense, um, which is perfect. So yeah, running shoes, um, agility shoes are absolutely imperative. You need to find a good pair of shoes that you are comfortable in, that you don't slip and slide in, and that you get a good range of motion in to suit your individual feet. Because like I said, without shoes, you can't run very well in agility. I mean, I have seen people run in bare feet or socks, which is probably really comfy actually, but I've never personally done that. I might try it one day, but yeah, you need to be wearing shoes really. So you need to invest in a good pair. So number eight, and this is quite controversial, and I'll probably get some hate for this, but dry robe, like people have differing views on dry robes. So some people love them. Some people say they're an absolute rip off and it's no point, but I love my dry robe. It's literally the best thing ever. I got it as a gift. I don't know if I would have splashed out on one for myself. If it wasn't a gift, 
I'm not sure. They're quite expensive. I think they're like £150 or something. But I know you can get copies of them as well. But my actual dry robe is amazing. It is an absolute staple for the winter. Like I'd be lost without it now. And it's just so easy because they're so thick and furry and warm that you actually don't need to have a lot under them, if that makes sense. So you could just have like even a thin excuse me again, a thin hoodie or a t-shirt and leggings and then you put the dry robe on when it's freezing and you're warm and it covers your legs, covers every single part of you except maybe your shins or something because um, we don't want it hanging on the floor but it is absolutely perfect and then just before you run you can take it off and that's just one item of clothing and it's so easy instead of having to take like 10 layers off before you run. So dry robe, absolute staple for the winter and it's waterproof so you don't have to pack a thick coat and a raincoat take your dry robe and it's two in one um i actually do get too hot in my dry robe <laughs> which is saying something um the hoods are huge it's just it covers literally every single part of you it's warm it's waterproof it is literally it's as if it was made for agility shows so i would highly recommend treat yourself dry robe put it on your birthday christmas list whatever christmas is ages away but it's more of a winter thing so it's fine um like i said in the summer you're probably finding way too hot in it if it's raining so it's not like just a raincoat but in the winter it is an absolute staple and I love my dry robe. So number nine, and this isn't kind of a brand like the rest of it has been. I think I've done all brands so far, yeah. But number nine is just a loose baggy pair of joggers. Could be any brand, um, size up from your normal size, one or two sizes. So I've got one pair and I, I think it was from, I think they were literally just from H&M or even Primark or some New Look or something pretty basic like that. But it's just like a thick pair of loose baggy joggers. I sized up, like I said, a couple of sizes and they fit perfectly over my leggings. Um, like I said, leggings can be, obviously they're so skin tight and quite can be quite thin. So, you know, your muscles can cool down in the uh, winter. Whereas you can, instead of having to change, you can just slip on your joggers over your leggings when you're not running and then take them off and you've still got your leggings on when you when you are running. So that's quite convenient. Obviously, if you have a dry robe, like I just said, you probably don't need to do this. But a pair of loose fitting baggy oversized joggers for the winter when you aren't running is super important for me. Um, I have forgot them before and it's been horrible. I hate the thought, even if I obviously I always warm up and cool down before and after a run. But I hate the thought of me sitting there relaxing and my muscles getting cold because you're more likely to injure yourself. So definitely invest in a pair of loose joggers to slip over your leggings when you're not running. So number 10 is, and now we're going into food, my favourite section. So 10 overnight Weetabix protein cheesecake. So this is going to sound really bizarre to most of you, but on my Instagram, there is a video of me making overnight Weetabix protein cheesecake, basically uh, what it is. So if you want the recipe, head over to my Instagram. I think I did it around last october -y time, I'm pretty sure around that area of the year last year. So have a scroll and go find it if you want to make it. But basically what it is, it's two Weetabix and you can get protein Weetabix if you want, but it's more expensive. So I just use normal Weetabix, two Weetabix crushed up in the bottom of a bowl, add some milk until it's sort of a thick consistency. Um, and pat that down in the bottom of the bowl. Then I get my 100 grams of, um, I have the low fat Greek style yogurt, but you can have whatever yogurt you want and put a scoop of protein powder in that. I use grenade protein powder at the moment, but anything goes. Um, my protein, protein powder is quite cheap. Anything protein powder wise, one scoop in that, mix it around so it's just like, you can't even tell there's protein powder in it. Dollop it on and spread it around. Oh, my wrist clicking into, can you hear that? Spread the yogurt over the two Weetabix. What the hell? <laughs> and then cover cover the bowl up put it in the fridge leave it overnight and in the morning it's literally a cheesecake consistency then i you can top it with whatever you want i think in the video i did frozen fruit and grenade salted caramel protein spread i think i did a dollop of that um but i usually now do a chopped up whole banana dollop of peanut butter and chia seeds and that is my breakfast it's a staple and the best part about it for me is that I can literally do it the night before, uh, wake up the next morning and I don't have to make breakfast. Breakfast is ready. I just have to add the toppings. So it's a time saver. means I can stay in bed for longer in the morning of a show, which is super important because I want to get as much sleep as I possibly can before a competition. So I perform at my best and I'm not running entirely on caffeine the whole day. Um, so that is an absolute staple recipe of mine. Number 11, Warburton's Seeded Thin Protein Bagels. I take a protein bagel to every show for lunch, 
perfect way to get protein in you got your carbs as well and then you can fill it with whatever you like so i usually do mayo um avocado chicken or salmon or some or ham or some kind of meat and then a load of salad and that is a super filling lunch not tons to say on that because it's quite self-explanatory but they're so good um and it's just a really substantial lunch to pack really easy to make really easy to eat and quick as well and it's absolutely perfect for your lunch at a show so number 12 is my protein bcaa energy drinks or a monster i get the zero sugar monster because it makes you feel like a health queen and that i'm not absolutely ruining my organs um because i know the stereotype of the non-sugar free monsters being very bad for you but you know whatever um so i get the zero sugar ones of those but a good energy drink is crucial for me i have a coffee in the morning with my breakfast with my overnight weetabix protein cheesecake and then at lunch with my bagel that we've just spoke about see it's all linked in i have my energy drink so i have two lots of caffeine in a day when i'm competing uh, i might have another one no nah just two usually i might have another one like three or four pm um if i really need it just to get me through the last part of the day but um, I have that energy drink at lunch. And especially when there's a lunch break at a show, um, it just really boosts my energy and just really helps get me, you know, push me through that last part of the day, my last few runs. So an energy drink is great. Like I said, the My Protein BCAA ones I'm currently drinking um, because unlike a monster, although I do love a monster, the My Protein ones are, do have BCAAs in them. So amino acids and proteins that help um, with your muscle repair and stuff like that and then they also have electrolytes which is a substance to keep you hydrated which is super important especially in the summer when it's hot it shows um, to drink as well as your normal water intake so they are brilliant number 13 is another my protein product so the my protein filled protein cookie or a grenade bar um, i have both at the moment any protein bar, uh, they've got 20 grams of protein. I usually like to get a snack that has around 20 grams of protein uh, for not that much uh, for, for low sugar and quite low calories as well. So maybe like 250 to 300 calories, which isn't too bad to be fair. Um, so I do really enjoy having those. Like I said, I usually have those at about 3 or 4 p.m. Just again to sort of refuel me after all of my runs so they are brilliant protein bars you know easy way to get protein in gives you a bit of energy at that sort of late afternoon mid afternoon time of the day um so we have five things left so 14 is the hydrate hydrate so the brand's hydrate 2.2 liter water bottle so you probably see me with this so it's a massive pink jug 2.2 liters so at the start of a show day i fill it up with water take it with me and then I try to get through the whole thing throughout the day drinking a little and often so it is absolutely perfect like I said it's super important for you to get you know all of your water in throughout the day so I take that and get through it in a day I usually drink about two liters a day um, a little bit extra at show because I'm so active especially in the summer when it's often quite hot so that is an absolute staple 15 is the Smash Planet Eco Lunch Bag. So this is like a little lunch bag, probably about this big on the YouTube video, not very big, but it fits a couple of cool, what's the word, cool packs, cool blocks. Um, and then obviously my protein bagel, my energy drink, um, an apple maybe, some fruit. Um, and it keeps my lunch nice and fresh all day long throughout a show. So I pack that up in the morning because it's a cool bag and then it literally will keep all my food cool throughout the day. Uh, so obviously my end drink's nice and cold because no one likes a room temperature drink. No one. Um, so that's great. And then obviously if I've got meat in my bagel, then that needs to be kept nice and cold and fresh. So it means I can take nice stuff like that to a show and not worry about it going warm. Again, especially in the summer. In the summer. I can't believe I just said that. In the summer. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not keeping this PG. Um, so that lunch bag is perfect. Keeps all your food cool. And like I said, for me, it's super important to take my own food and drink to a show because I don't want to be eating like chips or burgers or stuff because it doesn't make me feel good and I don't run at my best. So number 16, nearly done now, is a combination padlock. So I take um, usually take the one that I bought from the gym. Um, so it's not a padlock with a key because I don't trust myself not to lose the key. So the combination one's great. I know what it is, no one else does. And that's for um, locking up my dog's crates 
in the summer like at summer shows when you need to leave the van or the car doors open because it's hot um you can leave your dog in the crate but use the combination padlock to lock the crate up so if someone did want to nick your dog which is a huge concern of mine even though it probably won't happen at shows still paranoid um then they'd have to literally lift the entire cage out of the vehicle which they're never going to do so a combination padlock just gives you that peace of mind that your dog is all secure in the vehicle even when you have to leave the doors open so number 17 is a windscreen sunshade now this is obvious for when it's sunny uh, in the summer even not in the summer even when it's just sunny you know vehicles heat up super fast um and obviously you do need to have your dog in the vehicle between runs really that's just how it works at an agility show um but having that windscreen that windscreen sunshade just stops the vehicle overheating inside it keeps the heat out and the sun off which is super beneficial um even in our van it's more for our benefit because the back there's no windows in the back so it's nice and cool and shady for the dogs excuse me again but um it keeps us nice and cool in the cab which means we can sit in there and be comfortable between runs and because i don't want to be overheating between runs either it's gonna drain my energy i'm gonna feel awful um and it's just not good so that is super important whack it on your windscreen um on a hot and sunny day at a show and it will just keep your vehicle cooler for the both of you and it's a lot safer so number seven number 70 i just did that number 18 and this is my last point for today is a folding chair so again especially important in the sort of more summer season shows folding chairs are amazing um they are a bit like the becco bowl from earlier uh, they fold up so they're really compact um and they don't take a lot take up a lot of space in your vehicle to travel with um and then you can unfold them uh you can sit around your vehicle often i use them to sit around the vehicle with the doors open while arrows in his cage so in his crate so i'm just sat near him um getting a bit of sun because often it's nicer to sit outside on a nice day like that than in the in the vehicle um and then obviously shows where there's a champ final or you know you just want to watch some rings take your dog sit by rings you know if, if you've got a puppy and you just want to do some ringside training with them then you can get your folding chair and put it next to rings and you can watch like i said champ finals absolute staple is a folding chair um like i said we've forgotten our folding chairs before and we've just been at a show like now what do we sit on the floor <laughs> so that is a huge staple like i said we have three so one for me my mom or whoever is grooming for me at the time and then I think we have a spare one as well, just in case there's a friend or something like that. But yeah, folding chair, super helpful because we're in the middle of a field at the end of the day. And if we want to sit down somewhere that's not the vehicle that we come in, we need a chair. Um, and we're traveling, so we want it to be nice and compact and folding. So they, those are my 18 um, agility show staples. Like I said, I think this was a bit of a quicker episode because I have to crack on now and get a lot done. Need to do all my client training plans and videos this week. Uh, because I actually have four days this week where I'm doing agility it's su to some form. So Monday I'm, I'm um, judging at Dog Sports Derby. Tuesday I'm competing at Dog Sports Derby. And then Saturday and Sunday I'm competing at Nottingham. So let's get on with things. But I hope you enjoyed this episode anyway. Again, if you have any further questions about any of the products, uh, please do reach out to me. This is not sponsored, by the way, by any of these brands. I just thought it would be helpful to tell you the things I use because you could benefit from them. So just a little disclaimer there. Um, I'm, sim I'm simply saying what works for me, not promoting anything brand wise. Um, thought I should probably say that. But yeah, um, keep messaging me, um, feedback about the podcast. You know, helpful criticism is fine by me. I would actually appreciate it if you guys have any, any things you're enjoying. Um, please give me more episode ideas, guest ideas, all those things that would mean the absolute world to me. And what would mean the absolute world to me more is if you left a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, hopefully five stars. That would be great. I hope I'm doing a good enough job for you guys. Um, but apart from that, here are my social media links. Go follow all of these because I'm active on most of them every single day, especially Instagram. Um, I've actually been doing more TikTok videos lately as well. So I hope you're enjoying those. Really trying to push that as well as I really enjoy making the videos. But yeah, and also I hope you're enjoying Fitness and Food Friday. Uh, no, Food and Fitness Friday on my Instagram. Every Friday on my Instagram, food and fitness content. Um, 
like I said, I'm really enjoying doing that because those two things are my passions alongside dogs and agility. So I really hope you're enjoying that as well. But yeah, go check out everything on those links and I'll speak to you next Wednesday. Bye guys.